Hello, everybody. This is a brief on a very popular drug, metronidazole. So this drug is a 5-nitroimidazole, and it's a very popular antibacterial and antiprotozoal drug. We shall be discussing metronidazole under the following headings, that is mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, adverse reactions, and its important uses. So we shall begin with the mechanism of action. So this drug enters the cells by diffusion. So once it enters the cells, the redox proteins, which are present inside the cells of the anaerobes and the protozoa, they convert the nitro group of this drug to highly reactive nitro radical. So the nitro radical, it acts as an electron sink for the electrons which are generated by the pyruvate feridoxin oxidoreductase enzyme pathway, which is present in the anaerobes. Now the energy metabolism of the anaerobes suffers because the electrons that are produced by the PF4 pathway is scavenged by the nitro radicals. And as you all know, anaerobes do not have a mitochondria to aid in any kind of other kinds of metabolism. So its energy metabolism suffers in the presence of metronidazole. Some of the organisms, however, have developed resistance to metronidazole. And this is mainly because the redox protein nit generating the nitro radical from metronidazole are deficient in these organisms, or they may be possessing low levels of PFOR. Now let us look at the pharmacokinetics of metronidazole. So it's a drug with very good oral absorption. It is widely distributed in tissues and it penetrates the CSF and brain very well. It is metabolized in liver and is excreted in the urine. It is having a T half of eight hours. So it has to be given three times a day. It is available for use for under oral, intravenous and topical forms. So under the oral route, we are having tablets of different strengths, mainly 200 milligram and 400 milligram, which is the pop popular strengths which are available in the market. Then under the IV, we have got IV infusion and for the topical preparations, uh, oil, uh, creams and gels are available. Even for uh, intravaginal application, gels are available. Now, the adverse effects, the main adverse effects of metronidazole pertain to the GIT. So patients usually complain of metallic taste, anorexia, nausea, abdominal cramps. Some even complain of glossitis and dryness of mouth. When metronidazole is given by the IV root, thromophlebitis of injected vein may occur. The ADRs, which are usually uncommon, are urticaria, flushing, fixed drug eruption and rashes. Though fixed, fixed drug eruption is quite rare with metronidazole, this is a picture of the fixed drug eruption of a patient in our hospital who had developed the, a fixed drug eruption reaction with metronidazole. On prolonged use, they may develop transient neutropenia and uh, neurologic peripheral neuropathy and CNS effects like dizziness and ataxia. The contraindications of metronidazole include patients with neurological diseases, blood dyscrasias, pregnancy, and chronic alcoholism. Though there are not adequate studies to support the use or non-use in pregnancy, it is better to avoid metronidazole in pregnancy. Now we'll discuss about the important interactions of metronidazole. The most important interaction is the interaction of metronidazole with alcohol. So it produces a disulfiram-like reaction with alcohol. So we all know disulfiram is a drug which is used for the alcohol abstinence. So patients who are consuming, um, who are taking disulfiram, when they consume alcohol, they develop unpleasant reactions. And because of that, they prefer not to consume alcohol after that. So similar a, uh, reactions in the form of flushing, increased heartbeat, nausea, thirst, chest pain, and low blood pressure can be developed in patients who take metronidazole when they consume alcohol. 
So it, the doctor prescribing metronidazole to any patient should advise the patient not to consume alcohol while on metronidazole or else he may be at risk of developing a disulfiram-like reaction. The other interactions include the ones with enzyme inducers and enzyme inhibitors. So enzyme inducers like phenobarbitone, they decrease the um, therapeutic effects of metronidazole by inducing the metabolism of metronidazole. On the other hand, enzyme inhibitors like cimetidine, they reduce the metabolism and can raise the levels of metronidazole. Metronidazole decreases the warfarin metabolism and hence can raise its level, though that um, bleeding manifestations can be um, e expected in patients who are concurrently taking metronidazole along with warfarin. Similarly, metronidazole can decrease the renal excretion of the antimanic drug lithium. Lithium has a drug with narrow therapeutic index. So when if metronidazole is prescribed in patients with uh, on lithium, it's plasma levels have to be constantly monitored. Now, finally, we come to the uses of metronidazole. So we already have discussed that it is mainly used for anaerobic infections and for protozoa. So first, we'll discuss the important protozoal infections where it is used. The first and foremost is amoebiasis. So for acute amoebic dysentery, the usual dose of metronidazole is 800 milligram oral thrice daily for, for a duration of five to 10 days. Along with that, another drug that is diloxanide ferrovate, which is a luminal amoebicide, is also prescribed at the dose of 500 milligram thrice daily for five to 10 days. In the case of amoebic liver abscess, metronidazole is given 800 milligram orally thrice daily for 10 days, along with diloxanide ferrate, if the situation is serious or the patient suffers from a more severe manifestation of liver abscess, he may have to be given an IV infusion of metronidazole 500 milligram, six hourly for 10 days. Along with that, diloxinide ferrovate has to be continued as before. For patients, uh, for uh, asymptomatic cyst passes, metronidazole usually is not required. Diloxinide ferrovate 500 milligram thrice daily for five to seven days, which has to be repeated again, may be the only uh, preferred drug. Other protozoa where metronidazole is used is giardiasis, where it is given at a dose of 400 milligram thrice daily for one week. And the STD trichomoniasis, where it can be given as a two gram single dose of 400 milligram thrice daily for one week. Usually, intravaginal gel also is prescribed concurrently in the cases of trichomoniasis. The anaerobic infections. Uh, where it is used uh, is usually the post-operative infections after colorectal surgery, pelvic surgery. In the case of brain abscess and endocarditis, it is also the preferred choice for acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and trench mouth caused by fusiform bacteria. It is also, uh, it also forms a part of the regime for H. pylori infection and it is also the drug of choice for the treatment of pseudomembranous enterocolitis, which is a super infection occurring as a result of use of broad spectrum antibiotics. And it is caused by Clostridium difficile. In the case of pseudomembranous enterocolitis, it is administered at a dose of 400 milligram thrice daily for two weeks. So with that, we come to the end of the session on metronidazole. Thank you.